Hello, whatever flavor of enthusiast might be interested in this. Uh, what you're looking at here is a ship's wheel, or in this case, case a boat's wheel. Anyone who's looked at any of our videos has uh, probably surmised that we uh, have a boat up on the Great Lakes that we vacation on. Uh, we're well over a thousand miles away from that boat, so uh, I kind of have to uh, pick and choose the projects I do fairly carefully. We don't uh, have a lot of spare time to spend uh, on the boat up there and obviously can't just run over there and take care of little projects whenever we want. So this year we were fortunate enough to uh, get the boat into storage before we left, so I was able to pull the wheel off and bring it home. Uh, this wheel had been uh, unfinished. I don't know if it ever had been finished or not, but uh, it's almost certainly as old as a boat, 34 years old now. And uh, the uh, the wood was rather weathered, and uh, it was the only wood left on the exterior of the boat uh, that hadn't been uh, finished or refinished. So that's why it's here. Uh, I don't know if this will really be of much interest to anyone, uh, but uh, I in last year in doing some uh, little woodworking projects for the boat. I did quite a bit of research. We've got kind of a Franken finish on the boat right now. Um, a lot of it, uh, a lot of the bright work was in pretty good shape when we acquired the boat, uh, but some of it had been uh, let go. The uh, the stuff that was in good shape had all been varnished, and uh, most of the stuff since has been uh, done with this uh, sickened sea toll marine natural teak in this case because there's so much teak on the boat and uh, also some gloss finish. So um, I kind of vacillated whether to back and forth between varnish and sea toll on this. I, I just kind of had the impression that uh, sea toll is a little more durable, uh, long lasting. I don't know that it's any more easy to maintain than varnish, but uh, especially in the climate it's going to be in and stored indoors for most of the year. But uh, nonetheless, I decided to go ahead and do this in sea toll. Uh, what you're looking here is the uh, the finished wheel. The uh, the final coat has already been put on. When I went to edit the film, I realized this preamble that I'm doing right now, uh, I thought the camera was running and it wasn't. Uh, that's how great a videographer I am. And anybody else who's anybody who's seen any of my videos know how badly they suck. So, and uh, and there's a reason because I suck at this. So, but uh, anyway, normally something like this I would be uh, doing in our garage. Uh, it's the dead of winter here right now, so uh, I brought this uh, inside just so I didn't have to keep heating up the garage uh, every day to, uh, to put a coat on this. You're supposed to wait 24 hours between coats, uh, which I've done. And this has received three coats of the uh, Sea Toll Marine, or C yeah, Sea Toll Marine Natural Teak, and a uh, final finish uh, coat, gloss coat. Uh, before I started putting the gloss coat on this morning, after three coats of this, it was actually pretty uh, glossy already. I'm not sure that uh, the gloss coat was necessary. I may even uh, uh, work a little bit against it because the, uh, the the wood had been so weathered. The grain was pretty raised. I did uh, sand this down. They recommend using a 280, I believe, or 320 grit sandpaper to prepare the surface. In this case, because of the uh, uh, intricate shapes and so forth. I used 400 grit. I didn't want to take too much material off. I wanted to get it down to a natural wood finish again, but I didn't want to uh, affect the shape of any of the uh, the contours on this. So uh, I just very, very carefully and painstakingly uh, uh, sanded this whole thing with 400 grit sandpaper. And as you can imagine from, uh, from the detail on this, that took quite a while to do. So Uh, you should be doing this in a well-ventilated area. This uh, this room is so large that uh, there's really it, it's not very confined, so the fumes aren't uh, that bad, and the fumes off of this aren't bad anyway. So, and there's probably a little bit of repetitiveness here because uh, I'm now redoing this. I forgot what I did uh, earlier, and uh, so I've undoubtedly left stuff out, and uh, other stuff is uh, going to get repeated if I can't edit it with uh, out chopping it up too badly so so I did a few work pieces with this stuff last year and uh, in preparation for that uh, I of course did some reading and, and uh, uh, research on the internet uh, one of the things they uh, uh, want you to use as a uh, preparation and so forth is a uh, interlux special thinner 216 and I saw a hint somewhere last year that uh, 
it was basically the same thing as this, xylene or xylol or exylene or exylol. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I looked up the product labels on these and they're virtually identical. The uh, special thinner 216 and this stuff are identical. So, uh, and this from the, uh, from the local home improvement store is a heck of a lot cheaper as you might imagine. So just uh, an FYI there. Okay, so we're back. I've uh, stirred the gloss. We're ready to go there. I'm using a uh, white china bristle brush today. Uh, I think the instructions tell you to use a, a natural haired brush, something of that nature. Uh, this seems to work okay, and it's relatively inexpensive at the uh, local home improvement store. So I'm just going to start in here. I've, uh, I've marked the king spoke. It really doesn't matter which spoke you start at as long as you... Uh, keep track of where you're at so again this is the uh, the fourth coat that is going on this the, uh, the three previous being the natural teak and it took three coats to uh, to fill the end grain on this because it was uh, and the wood being as old as it was and dry it was thirsty Hopefully this will turn out. I've kind of gotten this uh, in tight. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here without getting my ugly mug in the uh, picture in frame. And don't worry, I'm not going to film the whole wheel. Just pick up the highlights here, fast forward through some of it, and skip to the end. And this is by no means the best way of doing it necessarily. Although I like uh, woodworking and shop projects, I'm by no means an expert. So, anyway, the main thing here is that, uh, especially on this, the. Uh, CTOL recommends that uh, on the uh, other coats that you put, apply it pretty liberally because it's kind of a stain. It kind of soaks into the wood as well as uh, colors the wood. Uh, but for this final gloss coat, I'm just going to apply it pretty lightly. And I can tell already that this is going to be a little more difficult to keep track of where I've been. I've got a, uh, I've got a system set up here. Obviously a piece of PVC pipe with holes drilled in it and uh, a couple of screws down into the sawhorses. So I can lift this whole assembly off and flip it over. So, and that's exactly what I'm going to do when I finish with this spoke. I'm going to flip the whole thing around so I'm still uh, applying finish from this side and get the other side of it and then just work my way around the whole wheel that way. This differs a little bit from uh, varnishing uh, any other surface on the boat because it's round, got a lot of uh, unusual shapes to it. I've been tipping everything off as I go and then when I finish this up the very last thing I'm going to do is very carefully inspect the uh, the whole wheel while I still have a brush out before I've cleaned it up and uh, tip off any runs Yeah, these are going to be a lot tougher to distinguish. So I'm actually surprised at how glossy the, uh, the finish was on this, just using the, uh, the natural teak without the gloss coat. In fact, right now it doesn't look like this is going to add a whole heck of a lot to the, uh, the glossy finish. It's probably going to add some, but not a lot. 
You can tell already it's difficult to distinguish from the uh, surface that hasn't been finished yet with the gloss. And I think we're kind of getting up into an area that's going to be out of frame now. Again, I got this in pretty tight so that I wouldn't appear in this. Because believe me, the last thing in the world you want to see is an image of me. Now again, as, I've, uh, as I'm going around this, I'm, uh, I'm paying very careful attention to the detail in here just to make sure that I don't have an excessive amount of finish welling up in there. And again, I'm going to go over the whole piece twice. When I'm done, just to make sure I don't have any uh, finished pooling or, or running or anything of that nature anywhere else. So, okay, this is going to be a little more difficult with the camera in the way, but I'm going to get this down. And now, what I'm going to do is just flip this thing around so I can start on the other side. Again, it should be interesting with the camera in the way. Okay, now we're on the same spoke, opposite side. Yes, I've already done these sides, but I'm going to do them again to ensure coverage. Won't hurt a thing because I'm going to tip it all off. And again, carefully inspect it as I'm going, and when I'm done, to make sure I don't have anything welling up or running. As you probably gathered, I've already done the other side of this on either side of the spoke. In this case, the king spoke. I've just kind of been going up to ensure some overlap. So we don't have a dry edge or an overly wet edge. I just go up to the center of the next spoke on both sides and I do this all the way around the wheel. Again, visually a little harder to detect on this coat. It was much easier on the uh, coats using the net or the teak tinted stuff. Okay. One down, seven to go. So I'm just going to move on to the next spoke here. After fairly carefully inspecting the, uh, the last one, everything I did over there. And here we go again. You get the idea. So I think I mentioned before, the, uh, the boat is over a thousand miles away from our location here. So uh, this represents about the last of the, uh, the exterior wood on the boat. Most of it was in pretty good shape when we purchased the boat. But catboard, trail boards, sprit, some other odds and ends needed to be refinished. Those have all since been done. 
Uh, this was kind of the last thing. Unfortunately, we were able to uh, have the boat hauled out before we returned home this time. So I was able to pull the wheel off and bring it with me because this would have been a very expensive job to have those guys do it for us. So, okay, you get the idea. I'm going to stop the video for now. We'll see you when it's done. Lucky you. Okay, so just finishing the last side of the last spoke. And it's looking pretty good, as good as it's going to look anyway. Again, the uh, gloss coat was probably unnecessary. Finding little spots as I go. Just take care of them as I catch them, because I might miss them later, though I'm going to inspect this very carefully. So. Uh, all this took, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, maybe not even that long. But I'm starting here at the, uh, the King Spoke, and I s deliberately set this up close to the window so I'd have natural light to work with. And I'm just carefully going to go over... All of this, you can't see me, but I'm bobbing my head around a little bit to get the light reflecting off of all the surfaces. Make sure I don't have anything pooling anywhere. A little bit right there. And definitely nothing running. Obviously very important on this because uh, you do have a lot of edges, odd shapes. And the most important thing, of course, was to be careful while you're doing it. Back to the king spoke. I'm going to go over it one more time here. Okay, I kind of focused on the outer spokes and the top side of the inner ring. Now I'm going to switch my focus down here. Let's get the king spoke down here so I can keep track of where I'm at. And I'm just going to look all this over again. Uh, a lot busier here, a lot more to look at. So. Back to the king spoke. Give her one more look here. Flip her over. So I can inspect the other side of the wheel in the same light. Okay, so that's it. It looks pretty fair, I think. Uh, I'll put a Turk's head on the king spoke here once this is uh, good and cured. And I'll probably also do a uh, Turk's head that straddles the king spoke on the outer ring there, just so there's a... Uh, uh, you don't have to look to see where the king spoke is. You'll have some tactile feedback when you hit that spot. I've actually thought about doing a cox comb on this. And although it would look really nice and salty, I'm a little worried about the, uh, well, A, you gotta do it. So it's another big project, time consuming. 
and B, uh, it's just another maintenance item. That's going to have to be shellacked or lacquered to uh, protect it from weather and, and dirt and everything. And it's still going to get real dirty, I think. So uh, I may sleep on that one. If I don't do it this year, I may bring it home next year and do that if I decide I want to do it. So, But probably the, uh, the Turks heads are about all that's going to get done on this this year. Polish up that hub. Here's the cap on the hub. It's made out of brass. This was actually so dark that I thought it was bronze but it, uh, it polished up real good. Uh, and I haven't decided whether to lacquer this or not. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards not lacquering it. It's uh, going to start to tarnish again pretty quickly, but eventually the lacquer is going to get chipped or scratched and it's going to start to uh, oxidize where that's occurred and you're going to have to strip the lacquer off and I don't know a good way to do that. Um, maybe somebody does know and, and uh, thinks lacquering this might be worth it. Uh, same with the hub on the wheel, that's uh, because you've got the uh, the brass hub coming right up to the woodwork there. It's uh, It'd be nice if you didn't have to polish that very often if you wanted to keep that bright. But at the same time you've got, uh, you're going to be working around the finished wood trying to uh, strip lacquer if, if you get to that point. So I wonder if anybody has any opinions on that. Let me know. Thanks. Don't know if this is going to be useful to anybody. But Sea uh, Toll Marine, the product seems to work fairly well. Time is going to be the big test on that. So it's, uh, as I say, I've got some of this finish on the exterior of the boat as well as varnish. Um, it's easy to work with, but you've got the two-part method if you want a, a glossy finish, whereas the varnish is, but you're still doing several coats of varnish anyway. So my big concern is going to be what happens uh, if you let this uh, weather too far, how tough it's going to be to strip, if you can strip it off at all. Varnish, not that it's easy to get off, is uh, you can uh, get off with a heat gun fairly easily. This you probably can too, I don't know. So uh, hopefully I never get to that point again. I can tell you one thing. I will never, ever, as gorgeous as it is, I will never, ever buy another boat with this much woodwork on it, ever. It's just too much bright work to try to keep up. And in all the boats I've ever had, we've only had just a little bit of uh, teak on them, handrails, a couple of handrails, that kind of thing that uh, I never worried too much about keeping up with. I didn't realize what a maintenance issue it is, so. Anyway, I think that's about it. Have a dandy day.